Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast at Tiffany's. It is a fabulous Sunday morning and I'm here again and here you are too. So awesome. Welcome to your place for joy and wellness. Did I say I'm Tiffany, your hostess? Well, if I didn't, I am your hostess, Tiffany Almazon. And today we've got three fun things on the agenda to talk about. And maybe a bonus fourth. Like, did you see this? Did you see this? Okay, so first up, food. I'm gonna share with you today about some fun little things that I created as I'm preparing for um, going on a flight trip while I'm trying to, not trying, while I am still eating raw and healthy. I've had a little reset, restart with that. And so I am committed to traveling with it as well. So I'm testing out some stuff. So I'm gonna share with you that. Second thing is we are going to talk about um, the story that you're writing. What are you creating? What does it look like? Are you the hero or the tragic martyr? Third thing is an unboxing. I've got this cool box. Look at this. I haven't even cut the tape yet, you guys. I'm gonna open it with you. Before we dive into those three things, check out this haircut. Would you believe that I did this myself? Yours truly cut her own hair for the first time in her life before she goes to conference and is gonna be taking all these like pictures, she decides to just do it herself. And look how it turned out. This is actually the best it's looked. Cause I've been busy and haven't had a chance to do anything with it. So I just kind of wash it and like let it go. And then it, you know, dries wonky, you know? So I actually diffused it this morning and I'm loving it. This did exactly what I wanted it to do. Um, YouTube is amazing and now that my, I've discovered that I have like curly or probably more like wavy hair, uh, it's awesome. You can cut your own hair. You cut on the curl. And so I did what I wanted to do. And how many times my whole life have I not done what I wanted to do? How many times have you not done what you wanted to do because you're scared, you don't know, you think it won't turn out right, you're not confident in yourself? I've had all those things. and. It's the world is just opening up. Everything I do, every win that I have, it just kind of like adds on another layer. So I'm tackling all kinds of like crazy stuff. And you may think it's simple, it's no big deal. You've cut your hair your whole life. I never have, so this is huge for me. And it was way too long. Actually, okay, you can look at previous videos, but I cut off this much off the length. Like every piece of hair I cut was this much, right? Even right here on my face. I hated how much longer it was in the back, so I was really trying to shorten that even more, and it's much more balanced, which is great. I'll, I'll cut more as this continues to grow. Um, and I shortened a lot of the layers because it was just getting too heavy, and I thought, well, I just wanna see what'll happen. Am I gonna cut the curl off? I don't know. I didn't. Yeehaw. So first up, after all that, food. Look at this. These are raw nori cheese crisps, okay? This is a nori sheet, seaweed, right? This is what all the, the sushi rolls are made out of, right? Except this is a raw version. And the only difference is you, you I don't think you notice anything on taste at all. It's just harder to find. Like I can't find a raw version in the store, so I have to order it online. But the difference is they just roast it or not roast it. I mean, and you get so much more nutrients if it's not roasted, so why not, okay? It changes the color, like one is purple, one is green, something like that. Anyway, I this is my new taco shell. This is my new snack. I'm gonna take this with me. I gotta find some containers I can travel in that aren't glass that won't take up loads of, of weight and luggage. But look at this. Do you hear that? Did you hear that? Oh, that's called crunch. This is raw cheese made out of cashews. And get this, red bell pepper. This stuff like this is why I planted six bell pepper, red bell pepper plants in my garden. And I, I hope they all grow because I totally want to be making all kinds of yummy stuff. Red bell pepper has a great cheesy kind of flavor when you put it in these mixes and stuff. It's awesome. So dehydrated to the rescue, dehydrate these for 12 hours and then you let them cool and they're 
a little bit still chewy once they come out of the dehydrator, but then you let them cool and they firm up and they turn hard. Could you just imagine this? Look at this big one. Okay, this is a full sheet. It shrinks up a bit, you know, right? But it curls up, you leave a little gap, it curls up because this becomes wet once you spread your cheese on it, so then it automatically curls up, so it's great. Now it's a dish, it's gonna hold stuff. This is your taco shell, tostada shell. Put that walnut taco meat that I did in my cooking show episode in the kitchen this week, put that on here. You can have your guacamole on here. Oh my gosh, that'll be amazing. You could put some green sprouts and stuff on it. Corn, add some corn to it too. Salsa, this is gonna be amazing. You can do anything you want with it. So cool. Can I have a bite? That's kind of rude to eat what well, you guys can't, but can I have a bite? Okay. Mm -mm -mm. You know how good seaweed is for you? And cheese? Really tastes like cheese. It is so good. If you want the recipe, let me know and I can pull up the official details on it. But you did it in a blender. It's loose cheese, it's soft cheese. Um, it's more like a, a thick, not dressing, it's more like a, a loose dip. It's spreadable, very spreadable. Um, oh, you know, it's kind of like melted cheese. Like when you melt the cheese and it's like, well, it's not like stretchy like that at all. But anyway, I dehydrated it at 105 degrees for 12 hours. Do it overnight, pull it out, let it harden up, and then you can just store this. This is gonna last for a while. You just uh, probably wanna store it you really can store these things open. You don't need to lock the container because sometimes that can trap the moisture in the container and then they'll soften back up. I mean, you could just pop them in the dehydrator again, but um, even so. I will look, um, I had intended to do it beforehand and I forgot. I was gonna look online and see if you could do this in an oven. I, I am thinking that you could. I'd just be curious like if anybody's actually done it. I would say put your oven on warm, pop the, the door open, like you can even like wedge it, put, put something in there to wedge it open if it doesn't stay open a jar on its own. And then just, you know, cook these for 10, 12 minutes or something and keep an eye on it. But I haven't tested it myself and I don't know if anybody else has done it. Imagine it should work though. And just think, if you're in a restaurant, this is super light and all, you go to a restaurant and all the stuff that you could get at the restaurant, I could go to a Mexican restaurant and put all kinds of stuff in here and make my own taco. Mexican restaurants are hard to eat at and be raw. <laughs> it's right here. This would work. I could add my avocado, my, my salsa, uh, you know, not avocado. The guacamole that they make fresh at your table, you know, you could just put right on here too with the salsa and all. And then of course the, the um, lettuce, the lime juice and all. Oh my gosh. It'd be so good. This could be your, this could be your, your chip too. You just break off a piece of these. This is your chip just to dip in salsa, cheese and salsa. Oh my gosh. So good. Oh, cilantro. Put cilantro on there too. It would be amazing. Okay, I was excited about that. Can you tell? All right, moving on. <laughs> we gotta keep this show going. Second item on the agenda. Um, what story are you creating? So I have been listening to Mel Robbins. You guys watch her? She does coffee talk now. She did the beginning of the year. If I don't know if you saw it or not, I've talked a lot about it, but she did the Mindset Reset this whole month of January, went into February a little bit too, and it was incredible, the stuff that she shared. It's all still out there. There's a whole playlist for it and all, um, but I really got into watching Mel because it was amazing content, and it was like, this is what I'm looking for. This is the person I wanna follow, right? You, you follow so many you know, speakers and per personal and professional development you know, gurus out there, and, and I was like, there's too much. Well, I found my niche, okay, Mel Robbins. So she's continued to do coffee talks. So most weekdays she'll pop on and sometimes it's a quick one, sometimes it's longer, but it's just what's going on in her life, being real and, and true to herself and, and sharing her wins and, and struggles. And um, she was talking about what you have to do. I thought about it, it's so true, because I've been doing this. You, I have to, to do these things. I have to get this done. You know, I've been working on a project with my dogs, trying to get the harmony going in our household a little bit better. And I'm like, I have to meditate. And I've been dropping the ball on it. I was like, oh, you just have to get this done because you know it's gonna be good for your dogs. I'm like, why? Why do I have to? Is, am, I, am I the victim here? And am, you know, is it, are you the victim? You have to go to work. You have to make dinner for your family. You have to run these errands. You have to go shopping. You have to do your homework with your kids. What do you have to do that you keep telling yourself to do all the time that you're not happy about? 
What if you simply changed the story that you're telling yourself? You don't have to be this tragic martyr. What if you become the hero? What if you become a happily ever after? I love happily ever afters, okay? I don't think anything should end any other way, okay? If it's entertainment, well, I just think life should be that way, period. But like, I don't pay to go see a movie and be crying and, and depressed when I leave. I want a happily ever after. You can write your own happily ever after. You can say, no, 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 I have to go to work, right? I bet that's what you're thinking. I have to pay the bills. Well, let's just even say you do have to because you don't want to live on the street. But what if you didn't go to work? You could live on the street. I mean, you could live on couches. You could bug your parents. You could you know, travel around from friend to friend. And you could do lots of other stuff. You don't have to work, right? You're choosing to. But if you tell yourself you're choosing to, it just has a much better feel to it because now you're like, I, I'm going to work because I get to go to work because I get to earn money. So I get to pay for my home and I get to have this fabulous life. You get to. Now you're the hero. Now it's an amazing thing. So what story are you telling yourself? So I've been really working on that um, this week to change that story myself because it's like I get to do all of these things it, and it's pretty darn amazing. So why do you get to? You know, what is it about it that that's so amazing? I get to feed my dogs a raw food diet and I am grateful that I can do everything I can and everything I know to create the happiest, healthiest, longest lived dogs that I can. It's not a have to because yeah, it takes work and it takes effort and it takes time. And I'm just thinking, you know, oh my gosh, I have to feed the dogs again. No, I don't have to feed the dogs again like that. I could feed them something else. I could go back to feeding them kibble and just pour it out of a bag and into their bowl. I could do that. But I'm choosing to feed them this way because I love them and this is what I know and this is what I am able to do. I get to. And it's a beautiful thing. I get to. So how many ways in your life can you change that up and say, I get to? I was thinking about this is, this is something, it's like so simple, so little, but it, it's like, wow, it really can make a difference. So do you take things for granted too, right? And so I found myself just, you know, I get lazy about putting on my night cream at night, right? And I was like, ugh. I'll just put it on dry. I'll just put it on before bed on a dirty face. And I'll just look like, and then sometimes I'm like, I don't want to do it at all. Cause I'm just like, I'm too tired. I'm just going to bed. I don't want, why do I have to put this cream on? I don't, I don't have to do anything. I don't have to put it on, but you know what? I get to, I totally get to. And when I think about it, I get to, it makes it magical and special and exciting. And now I'm just like, wow, I get to look amazing in the morning. I get to feel really good about my skin. And if you have a day when you didn't put your night cream on and you didn't get a lot of sleep and you're just tired and run down and you look at your face, you're like, oh, you don't feel as well, right? Because how you show up with your looks too gives you more confidence and you just feel better about yourself, right? So I get to put this on and not feel bad about myself. Not, I get to go out of the house without wearing makeup because I got to put this on the night before. And it was an amazing thing. So it's so many little ways that I'm just changing the story for myself. I thought if I keep changing this story to everything I get to do, what kind of fabulous life is that gonna create for me, right? And, and maybe some things I really do wanna change because I don't wanna get to do it anymore. <laughs> and that's okay too. But until you make that change or until you leave that job or something, you know, um, you get to do it because it's still serving a purpose. And maybe you'll get to do it at a new job and you will get to go job hunting, you know? Um, but you have that choice. And if you always look at it as having the choice, it, it creates a much happier life. You know, I'm, I say this is your place for joy and wellness, right? So be joyful. You can create your own joy by how you choose to look at the simple little things that you're doing every day, day in and day out, that there are a blessing you can be grateful for them and you can get to do them instead of saying you have to do them, right? I have to do these things before I can leave to my conference and oh my gosh, I'm gonna be stressed out for the next few days while I have to do all this stuff and I have to make sure that I get it all done, you know, or I, you know, I can't go without these things being done. It's like, 
I get to do these things. I get to go on this trip. I get to have this amazing adventure and I get to do all of these things on this long list because it's awesome, because it's my life and because I have a beautiful life and because I love what I have to do, right? So it should change your story. Think about it, if you look back on your book, what kind of book are you gonna write when it's full of you get to's? I think it's gonna be pretty amazing and I don't wanna be that victim. I wanna be the victor in my story. And so I'm changing up the script. And if you hear me live on a video or in person, if you hear me say, I have to, just stop, interrupt me and say, what did you say? Because it's, it's such a habit in so many ways and it's so common in our language and our vocabulary to say that I have to do this, I have to do that. It's just habit even. There are some things you say with drudgery, you know, I have to do this. But a lot of times it's just common habit behavior standard thing you say so watch it okay change it up see how it goes for you share tell me tell me how the how it works for you like try it out for a day or two or three or even a whole week and just be like I get to do this anything you're grumbling about no I get to do it and tell yourself why you're getting to do it like what is the good part about it like what is the end result there's a reason you're doing it even if you feel like it's drudgery or you have to do it there's a reason for it it serves a purpose so what is that purpose and then say I get to do it because and I bet you're gonna feel better. So here's to writing happily ever after and being the heroine of your own story. That was that. How about the unboxing? All right, sorry for the noise here. I gotta make space. Um, back up here, I gotta light. I didn't even cut the tape on this. Okay, so let me cut the tape here first. Okay, one cool thing is, look at this. Do not irradiate. So many things that you get have been zapped, right? It's not good. So you, you kind of got to watch for where things are coming from and how they're being shipped because you may think you're buying something that's good and it may be a good ingredient, but yet it's been mistreated before it got to you. And now you're really not getting the full effect of the ingredient. So it's really kind of cool. This stuff is coming from the raw food world. And I totally forgot what I ordered, but they had a, I think they're still extending it, what's left. They had a blowout sale. And so I was like, ooh, what all stuff can I pick up? So I thought I would just walk you through what I got. And I don't know what it maybe inspire you to make some cool stuff and or this could inspire me to make something for my next week's um, cooking show. I don't know. So let's see here. Recycle material. Back order. Ooh, what? What is out of stock? What did I order that I didn't get? Oh no. Oh, okay. Well, that's not too bad. I ordered yellow mustard sprouting seeds. Okay, here's the thing. Sprouting is one thing. Um, you can order like raw mustard seeds, which may not be sproutable because they've been irradiated because of how they've been processed and put together and, and prepped for getting to you, right? Um, does not necessarily mean that they could grow and become living. So sprouting is a key word to look for when you're looking for things like that because you know that they are still potentially can be alive and they haven't been, um, they haven't been, I don't know, what's the word? Mistreated? I don't know, they haven't been killed yet? So I don't know. So okay, oh yes. Raw organic buckwheat groats. These things are awesome. This is a complete protein source. You can do all kinds of stuff with this. You can make buckwheat flour and you can make all kinds of other yummy stuff that you would put in flour. Um, you soak these, they get really goopy. Um, they get like this, just like stuff on them and the water turns like goopy. But you just rinse it off. <laughs> so you soak them and then you rinse all the water off and then you let them sit there wet uh, and drained and sprout. And then these things become living, which is amazing. But this is such an awesome source of uh, good protein for you. And you can even dehydrate these and turn them crunchy. And then I put these on my salad as little toppers. They're amazing. Um, oh, yay. I'm gonna be making granola. No, not that, not that. I thought it was uh, something else. <laughs> I thought it was um, oat groats, but these are, I really did forget what I ordered. Um, these are wheat berries. So these were so cheap. I was like, how could I not get these? 
This is, you can, this is the hard red wheat, uh, soft stuff you can get to, but this is for wheatgrass. So I'm going to grow some of my own wheatgrass and so why not sprout it yourself, right? It grows really easily. Um, oh, yay. Oh yeah. Okay. Totally cool. All right. Olives. I can have olives eating raw. And see, these are pitted, dried, black and green, dehydrated mix. Raw, organic, vegan, Peruvian olives. This, um, I bought these or a version of olives like this once before and I never used them to know what to use them in. And so they got really hard and I tried to soak them and still use them. And I wasn't sure how they even came because it was kind of like they were in like one, like a shrink wrap package and I, I didn't know if they'd been soft. So this one, um, you can tell they're, they're soft and squishy. So at least now I know how they really were supposed to have come, which is great because I found all these amazing new recipes that use olives and I'm excited to get some raw olives. Cool. So I got two packs of those. Oh yeah, guys, colloidal silver. Have you ever used it? This stuff is an amazing ingredient. This is your natural um, antibiotic. So instead of getting antibiotics, colloidal silver. This heals wounds, um, it can go it, like this is why I got it as a gel version. I've never gotten the gel version before. This was on a crazy sale. If they have this left, you guys should, should really get some of these. Um, first aid gel. This works on, on wounds period, but you can wrap over top of it. Then there's a spray. I already have the spray version, which is great. So you can just spray it on stuff. It works great on your dogs too for wounds and all. And then this is the dropper one. So this is just the liquid one. So you can um, take it in a spoonful and just swallow it. Dogs love it, honestly. They, they really don't, they really love it. It's not like they don't care either way. It's no big deal. They actually don't really love it. So I'll just even mix it in with some water and put it in a little dish form and say, here, drink, you know. So I keep thinking of wounds and I keep thinking of antibiotics. Um, there was one, look at the, I'm trying to think of like other things you could use it for. One day I want to be able to like distill it myself and make it at home. You can, there's like, I don't know, I haven't looked into it too much, but there's things you can, tools you can buy to make to distill it, the, the silver. It's for preventative and for immune support and all. It's, it's really amazing. They have one that's a nasal spray even. I didn't get that version because I thought I could just use the spray and spray it up if I needed something nasally. But I wonder if that's good for travel. Like if I'm on an airplane and that, would that be like a good thing to help keep, you know, help my immune system for bugs and germs that I'm gonna be sniffing up. And maybe I should just be taking it just in general, like, you know, a dropper for immune support while traveling. What do you guys think? There's colloidal silver. So now I have my gel version, my dropper version, and I still have the spray version. Jing herbs. I don't know how to say this. He shu wu extract powder. Tonifies the blood essence. Properties, bittersweet, astringent, slightly warm. Organ meridians, liver and kidney. Organ meridians, very cool. Nourishes the blood and yin. Preserves the essence, tonifies the liver and kidneys. Kind of cool, huh? This, um, I got this because I know how great this is and it's gonna go for making coffee, like uh, versions of coffee, a non-coffee coffee. coffee. <laughs> what is it? Uh, let's see, polygonum multiflorum root extract. This would be like the Eastern medicine stuff, right? Legendary tonics. So as I make some drinks with this, I will have to share them with you how they go. Anybody use this? Anybody ever used this before? What have you used it in? I gotta find some other ways too, so. Oh, guys, okay. I was excited about this one too. Oh, I can see my counter. <gasps> I can see a counter. Wait, if I tap, can I see it again? <gasps> you can totally see it again. Oh my gosh, did you guys know this? I'm counting on my phone. I'm already talking long because this box is cool, but if on the top of your screen where it says live, if you tap on the live red little thing there, it expands and it shows you your timer. How cool is that? Okay. Organic goji berry powder, guys. I've never seen this before, but I was so excited about it because this I was reading, I hadn't thought about it before, but did you know you get hit with radiation when you travel? Fly? 
So this, goji berries, is supposed to be really good for um, helping your body recover from radiation exposure. And so I saw it as this berry powder and I thought, wow, this could be really good to add to smoothies. So I'm gonna try it out. You guys heard of this before? I haven't, I was like, there's that. Oh yeah, check this out. This, I'm excited about this too. I got all kinds of stuff in here. This is so fun. I got a bowl. Oh yeah, I got a bamboo bowl. But check out this bowl. I just love how bamboo smells. So this is a cool sustainable bowl. I like it. And it was a great price too, so. It's really cool, this is my salad bowl. I need one of these. I broke my last one, so. There's that, got a couple more things. Oh yes, this. I never see these anywhere, at least around here. Currants, I was excited to have these. I can never found currants in the store around here, and then they're really cool and like raw bakery type items and stuff, and scones and all, wouldn't that be really cool? Let's see. Oh yeah. They taste like raisins, but a little different. I like it. I tried to get more of these. They didn't have any more. This is the last bag. I was lucky enough to get the last bag of these currants. Um, so I'm gonna be using these in like recipes. I've got the scone recipe, the raw scone recipe. Maybe I should make scones this week for my cooking show. Mmm, I think. Okay, I got two more things. Oh yeah, raw organic mesquite powder. This is a superfood made from the entire pod of the mesquite tree, an ancient traditional food used for, used for millennia by the native tribes of North and South America. It's a low glycemic superfood sweetener, a robust caramel tinted smoky sweetness, deep malty sweet flavor. It's perfect for teas, smoothies, desserts, baked goods, chocolates, and coffee. Totally going in all of my smoothies. And this, wild crafted amla extract. This, I have no idea how I'm gonna use it. it what does it say on it? It's Indian gooseberry, 100% amla, Indian gooseberry. It's antioxidant rich superfood. It's again, also been used for millennia in traditional Ayurvedic medicine to enliven the body, promote longevity, aid digestion, promote healthy vision, cleanse the blood and provide mental clarity. It is made from amla berries harvested from a pristine Indian deciduous forest, low temperature dehydrated, and cold water extracted to a standard 30% tannins. This is was spoken about in Crispy Cancer and as being one of the superfoods to be eating. I mean, like the, the top, like the top one to be to be including in your diet. And so I thought, huh. How cool, why not try this? I know this is the, apparently doesn't taste very well, so I could just throw this in, I don't know, smoothies or my coffee drink or something. I don't know, we'll see. I'll try it out and, and keep you guys posted. Anybody ever heard of Amla? Indian gooseberry, who's used it? Cause I'm really curious about how to, how to use this and if I will notice these things. Like I could do it as a preventative, but will I really notice? This is cool, it provides mental clarity healthy vision, digestion. So I would notice all those things and liven the body even, I would notice that too. So kind of cool, I gotta figure out how to use it. That's all she wrote. That's the end of the box. So there you go. But thank you guys for watching today. And that is this week's episode of Breakfast at Tiffany's. Did you have fun? Did you enjoy it? I enjoyed sharing it with you, so. My plan to be shorter on time didn't really work out so well this week either. But hey, you could scroll past, you could fast forward, or, or you may not even gotten this far and have already left. So if you're still here, thank you for watching this week's episode of Breakfast at Tiffany's. I look forward to seeing you all next week. If there is something you would like me to talk about next week, let me know. Again, can I say it one more time? That's all she wrote. Thank you for joining me. I hope you have a fabulous Sunday and go get to do all kinds of stuff today and have a blast as you do it. And I'll see you again next week. Bye for now.